So, I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore! I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. This iconic line was shouted by fed up news anchor Howard Beale in the 1975 film titled Network. But this statement also applies to many people suffering from stress-based chronic pain, also called tension myositis syndrome. And if you're watching this video, it may apply to you. Do you have anger inducing people or situations from your past and or in your current life and is stuffing down that rage causing your ongoing tension and pain? The answer to both of these questions is very likely yes. So stick with me and let's discuss expressing anger to heal TMS. Greetings friends, I'm Laura Thornton, co-founder of The Pain Cure Clinic, and I appreciate your time today to watch this episode about the role that anger plays in generating chronic pain and other chronic symptoms. But before we get started, I want to give you something to help you after you watch this video. It's our free workshop for curing TMS. The workshop will show you exactly how to apply the mind-body concepts that Dr. John Sarno likely introduced you to. And if you follow through, you should see some progress, as in some pain reduction, in the first 30 days. You can access the workshop at paincureclinic.us, and there's a link below. Okay, so we get a lot of mixed messages about anger. For instance, is patience a virtue? Or should we strive to be like Howard Beale and express our angry feelings and not take it anymore? Now, if you're wondering what Dr. Sarno thinks about anger, you don't have to look very far. He starts talking about pressure and rage in the unconscious on page 11 of his book, The Mind-Body Prescription. Then on page 17, Sarno says this, Inhibited or consciously suppressed anger contributes to the reservoir of rage in the unconscious. My work has dealt with pain disorders that are the direct result of anger rage repressed, unconscious, or suppressed, conscious. He goes on to say that anger, that is the genesis of tension myositis syndrome, is generated in the unconscious as a result of three things. Number one, internal conflict. Number two, stresses and strains of daily life. And number three, the residue of anger from infancy and childhood. So according to Dr. Sarno, a lot of our anger lives in our subconscious, which means that, are you ready for it? You may not even realize how angry you are. This became very clear to me when one of our clients shared his TMS recovery success story. He said something quite profound about his emotions. Let's call him Dennis, because his name is actually Dennis. And you can see his full video story on this YouTube channel and on the Pain Care Clinic website. Dennis says this, we're taught to be these stoic robots, and that was me. I never got too happy, I never got too sad, never got too mad, nothing. And that was just constant repression that led to pain. I don't do that anymore. And you don't have to live like that any longer either, my friend. Now let's circle back to the end of that Sono quote from the mind-body prescription. This is the POW statement. After he talks about the significant role that anger plays in TMS, he says this, Moreover, people treated for TMS consistently get better. The same cannot be said for those treated for chronic pain in the medical community at large. So based on this statement and our own experiences being trapped on the medical merry-go-round, we can certainly add anger at the medical industry for misdiagnosing and mistreating our supposed medical conditions to our list of things that are causing us tension and pain. 
Now, unless you have a concerning anger management problem, think road rage, breaking things, or impulsively burning bridges with the people in your life, in which case, please add professional anger management therapy to the top of your action item list. Many, if not most, TMSers have the opposite problem. They hold their anger in to be nice, to keep the peace, to avoid conflict. Now, sadness, depression, even a little mild frustration are acceptable. But anger? Well, that's just not allowed. Or so we've told ourselves. So quick personal story here. Many years ago, I started seeing a therapist for a relationship issue. And after I explained the troubling situation and how it was making me feel upset and guilty for wanting out and even a failure, she said, isn't some of what's happening with your partner also making you feel angry? Huh? Well, in fact, it was making me angry, but I wasn't letting myself go there but I was paying this therapist to help me process my feelings and move on. So I replied honestly, saying that actually I was also angry. And then she said three words that have stuck with me ever since. Congratulations, you're human. So maybe the person you're most afraid of being angry with is you. The inner critic, that annoying armchair quarterback, constantly analyzing and judging your previous decisions and life choices. Certainly acknowledge your missteps, learn from your past, but then let it go and move forward. There's no healing back there. Now in the present, there are situations where you really do need to stand up for yourself face to face in front of a person you're angry with. But much of the time, you can release anger without lashing out quite so directly. You can journal. You can write a no-holds-barred letter that you actually send or not. You can talk it out with a trusted friend. Just allowing yourself to have angry feelings inside your head and not censoring your thoughts or labeling yourself as bad is a tremendous start to releasing all the pressure in your mind and your body. Now, another problem that we encounter with our coaching clients is that anger is often not generated by one big thing. If it's one big thing in your current life, even if it's really hard to face it, you probably know about it. You have a chance to get your arms around it and deal with it. But more commonly, repressed anger is like a phrase you've likely heard before. It's death or anger in this case by a thousand paper cuts, ouch. It's layers of anger about many things that add up to a big ball of anger wax that settles in your body as chronic pain or other chronic symptoms. If you keep stuffing it down and don't get anger out of your mind and your gut on a regular basis, it festers in your body, wreaking havoc. The good news is that you will receive a message. Chronic pain is your body literally sending out an SOS and you've gotta be your own lifeboat. I'll leave you with this final thought to consider. Anger often comes from a perceived lack of control or autonomy around the important things in your life. If you follow us, you've heard us mention autonomy before. Studies show that autonomy is a key, if not the key factor for happiness. So it's a domino effect in a good way, folks. Becoming more autonomous, which often involves speaking up for yourself, releases anger, and this leads to tension reduction and getting rid of your chronic symptoms. Amen to that. And we're big fans of taking action. In this case, that means after you acknowledge and let out your anger, take the next step and resolve the situations that are in your control and that are generating your anger as much as you possibly can. Getting the anger out is great. Not having to deal with the same anger-inducing situation over and over again is even better. Stand by. In an upcoming video, I'm going to talk more about control, about accepting what we can and can't control, a genius move that will get you even closer to chronic pain free. And right now, you can grab our free workshop for curing any chronic condition. Just go to paincureclinic.us. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Mm -hmm.